Hello there, Pursuing Freedom friends, and thanks for tuning in here today. We've got a great show for you today with Joseph Newman. He's with the real estate company Compass in the Denver metro area, and he is one of a number of rock star agents that I know that have recently made the leap to Compass. So I'm really curious about digging into what this organization is offering to real estate agents, where the industry is going, and how to stay ahead of the curve as we move into changing times. Um, Joseph's also the business partner of Eric Sultan, who was on the show a couple months back and was a wealth of entertainment and knowledge. So I'm sure we're going to have a fun time here today with Joe. So with no further ado, Joseph, give us a little bit about your backstory. How, when, why did you get into real estate and, and what's your journey look like up until now? Slightly born into the real estate industry. My father actually held a license back in the early 70s in, in the Boulder area. And uh, I kind of moonlighted with it all throughout my college career, looking at houses for investment. But I really didn't get into it until the early 2000s when I bought my first house with sweat equity with some partners and their parents and refurbished that. And the rest is kind of history from there. I've done everything from new ground build to renovate and hold for rentals and then ultimately as a broker. So what year did you get your license? 2016. And let me ask you something, when you were already so like heavily invested in real estate in terms of, you know, both financially and just active in, in real estate investing, um, why did you hold out until 2016? I mean, what was it that prompted you to finally get your license? That is so funny. I think about that often with so many people have said, you should become a real estate broker. You'd be great at it. The usual yada yada. But I guess I wasn't ready to fully commit to the industry. I'd like to have the little freedom. And I guess I, even though I'm kind of a serial entrepreneur, I was hesitant to go back into schooling again, get another license, and then maintain this public license to keep going forward. Little did I know that I would actually love it so much. And now I'm here to stay. Sure. So entrepreneur-wise, I mean, what other industries did you play around in before you got full-time in real estate? I have a indentured servitude to the restaurant industry. I've opened plenty of them. I've helped other people open. I've been owner operator on multiple restaurants. And in addition to that, I also have a uh, bachelor of fine arts. So I ran my own freelance graphic design firm intermittently through all of this for 10, almost 12 years. Interesting. So how is that graphic design background play into your marketing today? I mean, are you, are you leveraging that creative side when, when it comes to building your brand or, I mean, are you just, I mean, I'm just curious because I have no background in that and I could use some expertise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about expertise, but I appreciate it. You know, it's, it, it's a huge leverage piece for me because not only for time's sake, I understand all of these marketing programs and marketing philosophy. So I've been able to employ that with a lot of our work. But at the same time, it's a little bit of a draw because now I pigeonhole myself into the, oh, yeah, you're the marketing guy. Why don't you do some computer work and make this, all these pretties work for better? And that being said, I love having that acumen. But sometimes I kind of wish I was just a one-trick pony so I could only focus on one item being the real estate. Sure. So let's go back a little bit to the beginning of your career as a full-time real estate agent because... I know, but the listeners don't, that you had really quick success. You jumped onto Eric's team initially, and it wasn't long before you were 50-50 partners because of the amount of volume that you were closing on your own personal production, which I think is really interesting because a lot of team leaders that need support, which I'm assuming at the time Eric's business was taking off and he couldn't handle all of it and he could use some support, and you came along and then started crushing it in your own right. And a lot of team leaders that are looking for buyers agents who are going to bring some level of independence, autonomy, and be able to generate their own business along with supporting their business, that there's challenges there. Like a lot of buyers agents are just kind of waiting for the lead. So what did your journey look like in terms of getting into the business and immediately launching into generating your own business, your own leads? Like, what did that look like for you? What was your process? It's really kind of a unique scenario. The reality was because Eric and I had actually started in the real estate industry around the same time in the early 2000s by us buying our own houses in the Highlands area of Denver, we kind of were moving at the same pace. However, he went into brokering right away and he had been courting me for a long while. I was, I was playing hard to get for quite a while when he was asking me to join his team. 
and originally the thought process was I need a buyer's agent from his side. And I kept thinking, no, I'm not going to be a buyer's agent. So before we even committed to working together and me going and getting my license full time, we had already discussed this will be a partnership. However, work as a buyer's agent in that role to kind of get your feet wet. So it was already kind of predestined that we were going to be 50-50. Speaking to the, the building my business quickly, I really always had this kind of business-minded sense to jump in and just grind. And I was never afraid to work long hours every day. I've done before in owning restaurants. I've done before owning my own freelance graphic design business. So getting in front of people wasn't ever a problem and maintaining that, utilizing some of the tools that Eric taught me and some other, uh, you know, informational, uh, that informational spaces that I was able to grab techniques to really hone my sphere in, I just started grabbing more and more business and then getting more and more referrals. Eric was also good enough to realize that as a buyer's agent, there were some online leads and other lead capture that he could send my way. For whatever reason, I was fortunate enough to really get in there and be somewhat of a closer. And, you know, I did, I think, around 20 deals within the first 12 months of business right out the gate. So when you talk about grinding it out and, and jumping in and working the long hours, first of all, I appreciate the honesty there because I feel like a lot of folks, you know, get into the business thinking I want the freedom and flexibility and don't realize that that freedom and flexibility is earned by a lot of hard work on the front end, especially. And I think this is one of the challenges that I alluded to before where, you know, you've got a, a, you got a, a successful agent who really did put in all the long hours to build a successful business. And now they have more than they can handle. And then they're looking for a great buyer's agent and the buyer's agent doesn't want to put in that amount of legwork. And so they're kind of just looking for those handouts. Um, what did it look like for you? Was it immediately getting on the phones? Was it Get, was it, you know, was there one thing that you found that really worked for you and you learned that early on? Or were you kind of just like chasing every shiny object until something stuck? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I know exactly what you're saying. You know, I, I think you hit it on the nose with the earning the business as opposed to deserving the business. For me, it was a lot of phone calls. It was a lot of note writing. And I'm unequivocally Sagittarian extrovert. I get out there and I talk to people all the time. And for better or for worse, I try to be as charismatic as possible. And it's worked to my benefit. I have a lot of friends, a big sphere of influence, not only from family, friends, and peers, but also other industries. So it was an easy segue for me to get in and just start talking to other people. The other side of it is I always talked up any successes I could, try to be as intelligent as possible, and make sure that my competency level actually spoke to the industry I was getting into. So people didn't feel weary of, oh, what is this restaurant owner doing selling real estate? Or what is this graphic designer doing helping me get through an inspection resolution? Everybody felt pretty comfortable along the way because I'm not afraid of education. I would go above and beyond to make sure I knew just past what my licensure said, to make sure I knew what was happening and put it into real world time. There's got to be just an idea of this is what happens because we're in a real world. Pipes break. Let's help somebody get through it. Let's go out and meet somebody. Hey, you have a problem? Let me help you. Maybe you're not getting the right service that you require. Let's just talk. Awesome. Well, I mean, I think you hit the nail on the head there, which is that there has to be massive activity. And I think that a lot of folks get caught up in, well, what am I going to talk about? And they, and, they, and they are attaching too much of um, an expectation of a result of each each form of activity. So like if I make this phone call, they're going to think I'm salesy and because I'm trying to get a deal. And it's like, well, if there's no agenda to the activity and you're simply being proactive on purpose in connection with people consistently, you will find that the deals come from different angles. It's not, it doesn't have to be that the, the, you pick up the phone and every time there's an agenda that I'm going to get a deal from this particular connection I'm going to make today. So I think that it's kind of like getting away from the fear of being perceived as salesy, which comes as a result of attaching that result to every, every call you make. And instead just go and do what you did, like get out there and see all the people that you know and be in, in communication with them and let them know what you do for a living so that when they hear real estate, you're top of mind. I mean, it sounds like that's what you did. You just jumped in and got out there, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, in addition to that, if you come at it from a benevolent agenda, you're much higher received from all, all walks of life. 
I mean, come at it with some real good faith and everybody's going to respond to that. Okay. So I have a question for you and it's kind of, it might seem like an elementary question, but when you talk about, you jumped in and you had friends from different industries, you know, you grew up in Colorado, so you knew that you had a sphere. What was your approach to organizing that information? Did you have a CRM right out of the gates? Did you have a, how did you organize your database so that you had a plan in place right when you started making those calls? Oh, I had a mutant color-coded spreadsheet that was just massive. Uh, the amount of crunching on that thing was just ridiculous. And that was partially because it was an easy uh, utilization of a program I already knew. And everybody can utilize that. It just became so large, as most people know, it becomes this monster that you can't keep up with all the reminders. So I'm switching between the spreadsheet and then I'm jumping into my calendar and then I'm looking at my phone. Luckily, we have all this technology, but unluckily, there's too much technology, so I couldn't keep it all together. In the beginning, it was much easier because you start with this huge number of people and then you whittle it down and then you build back up again. Now that I'm you know, a number of years into the business, CRMs really save your life in just the long term and the longevity of your business. It's interesting you say that because I always talk about how it doesn't matter if your database is written on a piece of paper or if it's in an Excel spreadsheet. And as long as you are putting the people in front of you and being reminded of how many people you love and how many people love you back, and then you can just give them a call and come from a place of, like you said, benevolence. But the funny part is that just in January, we were like, all right, we're going all out with our database marketing and reconnecting with our, our database and our people. So we printed this, I created a report on Excel, 500 people from the last five years that we closed with. And I'm literally going through and color coding them all again, like it's 2006 <laughs> all over again. <laughs> it's I awesome. like that. But then, you know, we also have some really robust CRM, which could probably organize me much better than this, this spreadsheet. But like the archaic way works for me. So I'm just going to roll with that. Whatever works for you, just roll with it. <laughs> Got to get back to your roots. Be okay to get back to the roots. It's okay. Totally. Um, all right. So I want to dig in a little bit about the fact that, ironically, when I interviewed your partner, Eric Sultan, it was just a few months ago, and he was still at your old company. And then you guys announced on Facebook not too long ago that you made the leap to Compass. And as I indicated in the introduction, you're one of a number of amazing, cool rock star agents that have made that leap. So I am super curious about what's going on there. And what is it that drew you to make a company change and where do you see the future of real estate and, and, and you know, supporting the decision you made? It really is the future of real estate that supported the decision. You know, we were looking at what the industry has to hold from now to the future and how can we stay ahead of this curve. Traditional real estate, as we know, it has already been flipped a couple of times with the advent of internet and then also all of this mobile technology. So we wanted something that would look forward to our 10 to 15 years from now and stay ahead of the game, not only as realtors, but also as kind of technology gurus within the industry. We moved into Compass because they are better looked at as a technology firm working within an industry, in the real estate industry. The uh, Having a, a firm like that, a brokerage that also has technology engineers at your beckon is an amazing thing. And we're obviously growing and we're going through some of our own growing pains by moving brokerages because it was a very heartfelt move. We had spent some good time. I think Eric was with uh, our previous brokerage for 11, almost 12 years. I did three years with them. And we made the move so that we could be ahead of the game, make sure that we're doing the right moves for the right reasons. Some of that being we're moving into a world of artificial intelligence. We want to be on top of that game. People are looking at giant producers such as Zillow and Redfin and Trulia all the time. It's not enough to just spend a little money and try to capture leads. You got to have a little bit more to offer and it doesn't hurt to be a little bit more slick and modern with marketing, which Compass offers. Okay, so I'm hearing you say artificial intelligence and I'm thinking to myself, what does that mean in the the world of real estate. So what exactly does that mean? What is the future with art artificial intelligence in real estate? Well, I can't tell you that in all of your listeners because then everybody will be rich and I will be left behind. <laughs> okay, it's the best kept secret. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reality is I, I don't really know, but <laughs> not, being not afraid of, of the, the changes and, and what artificial intelligence has already done, 
from an entertainment standpoint in our world, I can only imagine that we're going to be handling, you know, one to three X the amount of clients at any given moment because so much of the automation will be happening. Interesting. Cool. Whether that's a robot or if it's an online scenario, I don't know, but I do like having the advantage to be closer to the head of that game than yeah. not. And what was, what would you say was one of the most exciting things that you learned when you first sat down with them? Um, you know, I've heard from a number of people, technology, technology, the future, where we're headed, you know, being ahead of the curve, all that kind of stuff. But I'm not totally sure, probably because I'm coming from someone who still uses an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> but what does that leverage look like? How are you changing the way you leverage technology as you move ahead? Specifically for me, it's about streamlining. We had talked about how you have multiple technology services at all times but it starts to get a little out of grasp because there's too many. Streamlining and having technology that can actually bring you down into one-stop shop, whether that's CRM, search, the MLS, plus all of your outreach and your marketing piece in one place, that's massive. That's not only massive for myself as an individual broker, but also for my team so that my director of ops can have more efficiency, take care of more business for us. I can just put more ideas and requests in her hands and she can actually execute them. It's not only technology, though. There's a real living piece to it. I wanted to be with a company that was excited about future forward movement, progressive thought process. And that's not to say other brokerages don't have that. However, this one really jumped out to me and Eric specifically as a potential place that's going to stay in front progressively for the next decade or so. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you for sharing that because it, it is very intriguing to me and I'm sure a lot of people that are tuning in today. So um, the next question I have for you is in regards to that partnership with Eric. So do you have any advice for folks that, you know, for example, I live in a really small town here in Winter Park, Colorado, where everyone knows everyone, all the agents know each other. And, you know, sometimes it's like if I was a real estate agent, I would probably be looking for that partnership because I'd want to have a way to offset the obligations and create some level of, I guess, balance, which is kind of a, a myth in our business. But, um, but I feel like there's a lot of fear around what that looks like and how to make it successful. So, I mean, what, what has worked for you guys? And I, I guess any advice that you have for, for an agent out there who's listening, who's got someone in mind that they think they are compatible with, they think they have similar work ethic and passion to serve and that kind of thing. Like, how did you guys navigate that 50-50 partnership? It's really the support piece. Knowing that you have somebody there to back you up at all times is the biggest part of it. And that's probably the most difficult part too, is finding somebody that has the same acumen, the same level of competency, and also the same drive to continue moving forward. I've had plenty of business partners over the years that we have a great relationship, but maybe we don't meet eye to eye on what a business should be, how it should run. Eric and I have been very fortunate in being able to have a, a very friendly and very business-minded stance on how we move this partnership forward. It is incredibly difficult when you're taking two individual brokers with their own individual marketing and deciding, okay, we're a partnership, but we're two individuals bringing into the middle here. So as opposed to just a pyramid with the top, we kind of have a flattened top with two people and then working downwards with buyers, agents, and what have you. The suggestion really is make sure you both know what's in store for you and look to the future because if you can't see yourself doing this and getting more and more tight as a unit and also relieving more of your responsibilities to people below you, then it's probably not going to work. If you need to be at the top, stay at the top and just do your own thing and hire buyers agents. Now, do you guys have pretty distinct strengths? Um, that you that are unique from one another that you guys are aware of that you leverage intentionally? Yes and no. Uh, luckily, we both are able to close some business. That helps keep the team running, of course. But some of it isn't necessarily what we can put a thumb on. But we have had the strength of being able to trade off clients and say, oh, look, this particular set of buyers or sellers really enjoys your personality slightly more than mine, why don't you take the lead? Having that, that give and take, the swivel ability is immensely beneficial to our, 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 our business. 
And how often do you guys find that you have to be communicating, meeting, and and discussing that pipeline and who's doing what? Um, is it pretty well? I mean, is it, are you guys together a lot, or is it like once a week you get together and do a pipeline review and then divide and conquer? We're often together. There's a lot of divide and conquer, but it's also a sharing of responsibility. Hey, can you do this inspection? Can you do this closing, et cetera? But that being said, we do meet often. We like to be in the office together. There's a lot of synergistic qualities to having each other there and talking through ideas. We also are, like I said earlier, into the education piece. So as we're learning new stuff about not only the industry or what's happening with the market or the economy on the whole, we get to bounce those ideas off each other. The other part is we have the better part of two decades being nerds together. So we enjoy the hell out of just hanging out and going to lunch and being in that partnership. A lot of time at lunch, business is uh, just a minutia of what we talk about because we need to get it out on the table. The rest of it is just making fun of whatever we're eating. Yeah, I totally get that. And I have people on my team that I feel the same way about. And um, it's, it's nice to have the camaraderie. It's the companionship, but it's also the sounding board. I mean, it's the support. It's all of the things. And I mean, I would never go back to being a one man band in a million years. So I get it. And I, I mean, I, I, I totally admire the way you guys are doing your business. It's clear. So what I'm creating passive streams of income through real estate investing, or is it more that you're going to blow it out for the next 10 to 15 years so that you're basically set for life when you're done? I mean, do you really think you'll ever, if you love it so much, do you think you could see yourself on a beach somewhere with an umbrella in your drink or what? <laughs> uh, well, just to be quite frank, I don't even know how to spell retirement, but I've heard of the word and I keep wanting to utilize it like it's somewhere out there. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's one of those shoot for the moon and see where you land kind of scenarios, you know, 10 to 15, whatever that means. Full retirement, I don't know that I ever need to be fully retired. But I think that there's a point where we both like the idea of being able to either hand the business off, sell the business, or just slightly monitor it from a distance. Real estate, uh, you know, it offers you that ability to just continue servicing people over years and years and years and years. But I think <laughs> knowing what is happening ahead of any sort of market trends seeing where there's downturns in economy, just being proactive and knowing that you can be nimble enough to make your business surf along with different states of economy is going to be huge. And that's really what we focus on. We make sure that we are not just a step ahead because that's somewhat cliche. Everybody, I mean, why not? We'd all like to be a step ahead or three steps ahead, but being able to be slightly more proactive than reactive, I think is going to be the boon to our business. Yeah. And just like, you know, it's preparing for resilience for any shifts that may arrive. And I think that's in the market, but it's also personal and professional. Like things happen and, and, and having systems in place, well, a well-oiled machine that's, that's ready to navigate any, you know, unexpected twists and turns in the journey is a good thing. Um, I know, like, I really appreciate you taking the time specifically today and right now, because I know you're kind of still in the throes of transitioning companies, which is always, you know, a big undertaking for any of us. Um, what, are you, what are you guys looking ahead to? I mean, what does the next year or two look like? Are you recruiting? Are you growing your team? Um, you know, what's, what's the future hold? I think we're always willing for the idea of growing our team. But like you said, right now we're in the throes of really honing into the new brokerage. It's really been a great thing for our team and it's creating a tighter net for us. And from there, we're going to be able to really push forward and, you know, pursue possibly more buyers agents, get into bigger scenarios with uh, our listings. It's, I think it's really just going to be a, a good steady growth. I'm not looking to just shoot a rocket and all of a sudden be overwhelmed with everything. Sure. Awesome. Well, I'm excited to watch the journey and, and see your success continue to grow. And I really, really appreciate you taking the time to be on the show today. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation. It was a great time. And all you Pursuing Freedom friends out there, as always, if you're enjoying this content, please go ahead and subscribe on YouTube or iTunes on the podcast app on your phone. 
because it helps us continue to attract amazing guests like Joe here. And um, yeah, it helps people get find this great content. So appreciate you tuning in as always. I love having you here and I look forward to catching up soon.